Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's meeting. I'm Councillor Jeffries, and I'm chairing the committee meeting. To my right are Planning Officers Anthony Devey and Sarah Lamming, and to my left is Jane Dale from Democratic Services and the Council Solicitor, Diane Hayden. Also in the chamber are members of the committee and the public. Arrangements for dealing with the planning applications, an officer's summary and update will be given. Items involving members of the public will be dealt with first and speakers are restricted to three minutes with a warning when 30 seconds remain. Speakers are not permitted to circulate additional information, including photographs, plans or petitions. Any councillor not on the committee who has requested to speak will also be given three minutes. Members are to note the information given by officers and speakers, any decision proposed which is contrary to the recommendation contained in the report will require reasons if the proposal is to refuse and reasons and conditions if the proposal is to approve the application. In accordance with the Council's equality policy, speakers are asked to refrain from making any comment which could be construed as being discriminatory, defamatory, otherwise it will be necessary to intervene. Additionally, I would request that although different views, differing views may be expressed, that people respect those differences. Please ensure mobile phones are switched to silent to avoid any disruption during the meeting. And also, whilst you are not speaking, you can put yourself on mute if you have not already done so. Fire procedures. If the fire alarm sounds, attendees will be directed to go. Please follow the instructions given by the officers. Thank you. Right. We'll uh, now move on to the agenda items. Declarations. Yeah, just going to Agenda item number one. Declarations of pecuniary, non-pecuniary and prejudicial interests and declarations under Section 4 of the Planning Code of Practice for dealing with planning applications. Members to declare any interest in items on the agenda and the nature of such interests. Right, Councillor Casson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the first application on, in Ellica, I received email regarding this application. I didn't answer it. So thank you, Chair. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Gill. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, likewise, I've received an email from the Ellica applicant. Um, I didn't acknowledge that, but have read it. Thank you. Councillor Meredith. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, on agenda item for the Ellica application, uh, I am a school friend of the applicant's uh, child, and so I feel that it's impossible for me to be viewed as being impartial. Um, so I will be leaving the room during the discussions and the debate and votes of that application. And then agenda item five, the South Cave application. I have attended numerous South Cave Parish Council meetings over three years now, where all four previous applications have been discussed. And this one, again, as recently as last night, I have sat quietly, believe it or not, in the corner and let them have their discussion. Thank you. Neil there. Yes, Councillor Needham. Uh, yes, I've also received an email with regard to Section 4, but have not got into conversation about that. Just read that. Councillor Robson. Ditto. Yes, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I've also received uh, an email regarding item four on page five. I have acknowledged the, re the email, but I haven't commented on the uh, contents of it. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Oh, yes, Councillor Hopton. It's just the same. I've received the, the same email, but I didn't acknowledge it. Sorry, um, uh, through you, Mr Chairman, could I just ask the officers, please, whether or not they've received a copy of the email which has been sent to members and forms part of the um, debate? Thank you. Not that we're aware of, Chairman. So, sorry, Mr Chairman, I must make the point at this point that if the officers haven't seen the email and the content of it, they're therefore at a potential disadvantage because members may have been given information which officers haven't been given. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, agenda item number three, withdrawals. Are there any withdrawals at all? No withdrawals, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, yes, sorry, I'll uh, go back to agenda item number two. Um, to approve as a correct record the minutes of the meeting of this subcommittee held on the 12th of March 2024, pages one to three. Could I have a proposer and a seconder? Councillor Casson proposing, seconder. All in favour? Be a slight change to the order of agendas. Our first uh, agenda item will be agenda item number five, Linfield Mill. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. Right. It will be agenda item number four. Sorry. Do apologise. Uh, Linfield Mill, Elica. And could I have a report from the uh, planning officer, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is an application for the erection of a replacement dwelling following the demolition of the existing dwelling at Linfield Mill Hill in Ellica. The officer recommendation is refusal uh, and there are no updates to the report as printed. Thank you. Uh, we have our first speaker on this one today is uh, Mrs Glover, the applicant. You have three minutes, Mrs Glover, with a 30 second warning. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I became a paraplegic in late 2012 and adaptations were made to our current house to help with my disability. However, these are not suitable long term and I need a fully accessible future proofed home. Linfield is ideal being a level plot enabling me to also access all the garden. However, it is too small for a wheelchair user. The bathroom and one bedroom are completely inaccessible and as it is of no architectural merit and poorly constructed a replacement dwelling was thought to be appropriate. There were three criteria for the design. Firstly, full accessibility in the bungalow and garden. Secondly, that the proposed new bungalow should complement and sit well in the conservation area and reflect the materials used throughout the village. And thirdly, in line with the current worries about energy and the guidance notes for design codes produced by the Ministry of Housing, Community and Local Government, and East Riding Council's own draft design code that it should be self-sufficient in energy production. As the proposed dwelling faces south and west, solar energy powering an air source heat pump was the obvious choice. However, standard large flat solar panels on roof slopes are an eyesore, and I decided on photovoltaic slates. These look like regular roof slates and therefore give a better aesthetic in the village street scene. The conservation area appraisal for Ellica states that the predominant roof coverings are pantile and slate, as well as, older property, as well as older properties in the village with slate roofs. There are two new properties in a high profile location on the corner of Howden Hillcroft and Main Street, which have slate roofs. Like Linfield, these properties are surrounded by houses with pantile concrete and rosemary tile roofs. However, the conservation officer stated in planning application 213276 that as slate is one of the common materials used in the village, it would be considered unreasonable to resist its use. My current wheelchair is 60 centimetres wide, 110 centimetres long, and has a turning circle of 1.25 metres. This means that considerably more space is needed internally than an ambulant person requires, which has accounted for the proposed dwelling being larger than Linfield. However, should I need a motorised wheelchair in the future, there will be space to accommodate it. The choice of floor length windows was determined again by my disability. I need to be able to reach to open and close windows and also in the event of a fire, I need to be able to exit any part of the building, which I can only do via a full length window. Importantly, none of these windows will be visible from Main Street. The current dwelling is hidden from view behind the existing hedge which I intend to extend across the width of the site to the southwest and will, in addition, have a six foot high fence as screening until this new hedge is established. Could you please summarise, Mrs. Glover? Thank you. Oh, I didn't realise I would be allowed to do that. So. Sorry, that's three minutes. minutes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. 
right. I'll leave this open to the members. Any members wishing to speak on this application? Yes, Councillor Gill. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd speak first being a ward member uh, for this area. So, uh, yes, thank you, yeah. Uh, so certainly from, obviously we're looking at uh, material considerations out of, out of anything else. Um, certainly, my view at the moment is this, what has been proposed, is, a, is quite an improvement on what's there already. But from what I learned and understand is that there are obviously some pedantics over the materials, uh, roof materials and the stone cladding, which are a bit of odds with the surrounding area. And uh, there are pantile roofs. I, I've actually... I know the area well. I actually went this morning just to double check. Uh, there are red roofs around this property. Uh, there are some slate roofs further to the south, but this is well within a, a red roofed area. Uh, and I understand the position about having the photovolvic tiles, which are grey, black invariably, and then, yeah, you think it'll disguise it better if it's got grey slate, but I, I understand that you can actually get um, red coloured solar panels and there might, might be a way around it. I, I'm obviously going to listen to the rest of the debate from, from other uh, members, but um, the property looks nice. It's I can understand that there are some fascia materials, roof materials are not quite into the um, conservation area and the, and the properties around it. Uh, but if I could reserve the right to come back once the debate goes on, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gill. Any other councillors wishing to make any comments on this application? Yes, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, in a substitute, I've kind of come quite late on this. So I've, I've been reading very quickly to try to keep up to speed. And I've had to rely, unfortunately, on Google Maps to have a look at, um, at the pictures on there of the surrounding area rather than having the chance to, to go out as, the, as my colleague has. Um, I noticed when I was reading the conservation officer's um, notes um, that it was said that um, they, in essence, had no objections in principle to this. Um, and I can understand that because the uh, uh, original uh, building is definitely uh, been improved upon by by this new one. Um, however, um, it, it was of no significant or architectural uh, significance, and it did detract from the character and appearance of the conservation area. Therefore, anything would be better than that. Um, and the conservation officer has stated quite clearly that the materials are varied in, in this conservation area. Uh, uh, including uh, pan tiles, slate roofs, stone, brick, render walls, and some painted um, areas. And indeed, on Google Maps, I went to have a look at Main Street, which is literally just next door, and there are um, stone, brick, painted, and they have a number of different roofs. I absolutely agree there are no slate roofs. However, there are dark-coloured ones, pan tiles in dark colours, not in red, uh, which is interesting. Um, so I was a, a, a little confused as to the objections by the officers um, about this that particular side of it, um, given that the they're objecting against what the conservation officer has, has, has indicated, that uh, there is no real issue with most of it. That said... Um, I, I do follow the fact that there the may be a change, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm guided by uh, the, the local ward councillor, uh, who knows far better than I do, uh, as to whether or not we should be looking at maybe making a, 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 an approval subject to the change of these particular materials. As to the sash windows, there are many on Main Street that don't have sash windows there. So again, confused with that statement. Um, and I don't see why the windows, given the fact that it's not in full view, are causing a problem. Um, the fact that we have a disabled uh, applicant, I think we need, as part of it, to actually look to making sure that the disabled access is there. And not just the front door. I think we, we need more than that. Uh, and and uh, I, I don't think we should be um, arguing over um, 
whether or not the semantics of a of a sash window that doesn't exist in lots of other parts of the conservation area should apply here and and um floor to ceiling windows would be an obvious choice um and um and i i personally um feel that that, that that's not an issue with it um so the principles of a of a replacement drawing everybody agrees is acceptable um, it's whether or not the materials that are being used um, uh, meet with, with what happens. And the conservation officer doesn't seem to have a, a big issue with it. Um, the proposed, therefore, as far as I'm concerned, I, I can't really see a great deal of, of issue with this, other than the roof, um, if, if, if that seems to be an issue. Uh, then quite rightly, you, we, we would have to look to pan tiles on that. Uh, and those pan tiles may be having some form of uh, solar panels which could blend in better, or if not, then they'll just not blend in because there's lots of solar panels again. And part of this council's view is with its um, with its time is that we we are looking to make sure that that we look to a, a, a more sustainable future for for new houses, especially uh, on the uh, especially with photovoltaic cells. Um, so overall, I'd be interested to hear what others have to say. I was quite surprised that nobody else put the, 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 the hand up there, for that's why I did. I was wanting to listen to others first before I said anything. Um, but I, quite frankly, right now, I, I am minded to approve this, not the other way around. So someone's going to have to convince me as to why we shouldn't do not the other way around. Thank you. Councillor Robson, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I mean, I think the overriding factor here is practicality. Um, uh, I, to tell you the truth, Councillor Wilkinson has said like sort of ninety percent of what I was going to say. So, um, I, I totally one hundred percent agree with what he said. Um, the issue here is practicality. So far as floor to ceiling windows go, um, I think that's a kind of necessity. And there are certain things here because of the functionality of the building, um, which is not merely a dwelling house, but a dwelling house that is disabled friendly that um, I think they're necessary, so I would concur with that. As regards materials, to tell you the truth, I mean, there's. it looks as though in this, in this area there's all kinds of styles, and so long as it looks presentable, which I believe it does from what I can see, I've got no problem with it at all. So I would personally um, move to approve, if I, if I may do that. Yeah, certainly. To Council Hopton, you wanted to speak? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Burning Man, Councillor Robson's just moved to approve. I, I, I don't like going against our um, planning officer's recommendations, but I do. It does feel like there's a, a difference of opinion between the conservation officers and the planning officers. Um, could I ask Tony, sort of, is that, am I right in sort of saying that? The way, reading the what I'm reading from the conservation officer and, and where you guys are at, would, would you be able to just? Briefly summarise that for me, please. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman. I think the conservation officer and, and us as officers were all on the on the same page. The conservation officer makes reference to what the conservation area appraisal says, but he does confirm so sort of third paragraph of, of the response that the the scheme is very modern. The plan form makes it appear rather large. The fenestration is too contemporary. Is not in keeping with the character and appearance of the conservation area, and that is essentially our concern. The design we feel is very good. Um, it, 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 we just don't think it's appropriate for this corner of the conservation area, which is dominated by red brick and tile or, or rosemary tiles of a red colour. Um, so as a contemporary scheme, it works very well. As members, you need to decide whether you're happy with a contemporary dwelling in this part of the conservation area or whether, like us and the conservation officer, you feel that something more traditional would be better for this site. So... On that, then, are we are we okay with the principle of the we're not okay with the windows? Then is that right? Is that I'm, sorry if I'm being a bit thick here, but I'm, I'm I didn't really read that specifically in the. It's it's in a combination. It's a combination of the design and the materials. It's a very contemporary looking house. There's a lot of glass with aluminium frames. It's going to have a dark coloured slate roof. We wanted something more contemporary, so we're not necessarily saying. Um, the design is bad. It's just not right for the site we feel. Councillor Robson. Thank you, Chair. Um, as regards, in in answer to what Officer Devies just said, in regards to materials, slate has been going for hundreds of years, and there's plenty of it apparently in the um, 
the village anyway. And brick has been going for hundreds of years. In fact, it's been going since Roman times. So I, I don't think these are modern materials. I think these are traditional materials. The only issue really is with the windows and, and the full height windows. But as I said before, um, and Councillor Wilkinson pointed out, these are practical things, they're necessary. Um, so consequently, if it has a modern kind of feel about it, so be it. I mean, what's the problem with modern? Um, you know, I, I'd i like someone to support me to approve this. Thank you. Do you any more wish to speak on that one at all, Tony? I mean, um, um, just just looking at the materials being red pan tiles, I mean, could, could we pass approve this with conditions of a change of pan tile colour or a, b be more engagement with the applicant to see what else we can, um, you know, possibly come to... You know, conditions that would be meet more with approval or uh, the street scene. If you if you were to approve this today, um, we would absolutely like to see a materials condition imposed, whereby we could view samples of those of those materials on site prior to the commencement of development. My worry, as the applicant said in her in her three minutes, is she has a clear preference for slate. She said why in terms of the solar panels and the, the impact on the character of the area. So I worry that we're pushing that debate about materials onto the discharge of condition stage as opposed to having it now, but absolutely you could grant planning permission with a condition requiring no development to commence until the details have been agreed. Is it because it's possible to defer this and until it come, come back again? And until we, you know, you're happy that you feel that you're more happy with the uh, design uh, that would be more fitting with the street scene? Um, we've, we've, we've had that back and forth with the applicant already, and this is where we're at. Um, I don't think there's any merit in delaying a decision for the applicant further, to be honest, Chairman. Right, so, oh, <laughs> yes, Councillor Bowell. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, so, yeah Bowell, thank you. Sorry, yes, Councillor Bowell. Right, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm quite happy to, uh, to second this proposal for acceptance. Um, as it's been mentioned uh, by Councillor Wilkinson, who summed this application up very well, and... Uh, I think that the, the choice of either slate or pantal, like I said, they're both traditional materials. Uh, what this, book, this proposal is, it's going to improve the area. Uh, the current state of the bungalow there is said to detract from it. So this is a definite improvement. And uh, there's certainly going to be, uh, it's going to be an energy efficient building as well. So I think there's quite a lot going for it. So I'm quite happy to uh, um, second this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Did you want to speak again, Councillor Gill? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, having heard all the the comments, um, you know, it's really helpful. Um, uh, the I wanted to point out that the parish council didn't have any objection, but they were concerned about the materials, the surface materials. Mm -hmm. There's no objection otherwise, and um, that's the bit that it's a, it's at odds really, and whether there should be some consultation after the approval about. The roof or the, or the, the surface materials. Uh, I notice on the artist's impression here, it looks like more manufactured stone as opposed to natural stone, which most of the neighbouring houses are. You know where you get the old, it's like brick stone type of thing. Uh, whether there's a, a different type of cladding would satisfy that. Uh, the roof, I'm a bit indifferent about because I understand that yeah, we need sustainable homes from a power point of view. Solar panels are invariably black, and these. Uh, photovolvic, if I'm saying it right, tiles are black. Apparently, there's I don't think there's any red ones. Uh, but then again, you see, we, we've got houses nearby that do have pan tiles, or the rosemary tiles, and they've got solar panels on top of that anyway. So um, is the roof that important? Uh, it's in a, in a corner. It's tucked away. It's not really that visible from Main Street. Uh, and I still think it's quite an improvement. I'm in mind to, uh, certainly in mind to support the approval, but maybe have a reservation on on some of the conditions may be met. But I don't think maybe it doesn't need to be as sounds of it's really enforcing what needs to be done. I'm not sure it's that critical as it's been made out. So I'm slightly indifferent with. I'm okay with approving. Slightly indifferent about what materials could practically be done to get this away without them resubmitting another application. Thank you. Councillor Robson, I want to speak again. Thank you, Chair. Um, are we in a position to, as uh, um, Officer Devi said, 
are we in a position to delegate this for approval, um, delegate it back to the officers for approval, subject to um, an examination of the materials that are being used and approval of the material used um, before building? You've got two choices. You can approve the application today with a, with a condition that requires materials, details of materials to be submitted and agreed before development commences. Yeah. Or you could defer a decision back to officers to agree those details in advance with the applicant. That wouldn't really save them any time because if you if you grant planning permission today, there's going to be other conditions that, that will be needed. So my advice to you would be to add the materials condition. Add the, add the material. Yeah. Right, should we go ahead with that then? Pardon me, through the chair. Um, Sorry. The, the first, the first option sounds the best. No, thank you. Uh, yes, Councillor Wilkinson. I, I am actually concerned. The obvious officers have got their view on, on what they require, and if we just put it back to them to have a discussion, then obviously we're not going to. They've already gone through this process a number of times with the applicants, so it's just not going to come to a fruition. Therefore, we're wasting our time if that's what we're going to do. What we need to do is make a decision now, and as Mr. Davis su suggested, maybe we could make that suggestion on the basis of the materials we think are correct. Um, and then uh, if if that's, well, that's what we, we decide, then it will obviously, because it's against officers' recommendations, have to go to strategic planning. And therefore, they can then look at it too. Would you not? Uh, okay, in that case, we wouldn't. <laughs> Thank you for the little nod. <laughs> I'm so used to my, my decisions being taken there, so that's probably why. Um, so I, I think we, we need to come to a decision on which materials we're going to decide on. Um, now, slate is not wrong for a, a conservation area. The question is, is it wrong for this part of the conservation area? Um, and, and that's something for us to decide. And I would defer preferably to the ward councillor because he's the one that knows better than I do um, whether or not it's the right or wrong thing. And if not, then let's go for red pan tiles. And, uh, you know, as you quite rightly said, as my colleague said, that, that there are already red pan tiles with photovoltaic cells on them. So it's, it's not out of keeping with the rest of it. Um, I don't, I've never quite liked the idea of street scene um, because if you've got a set of boxes sat on a road, I don't see why we should keep another set of boxes to add to them. I, I think we've got to be careful we don't end up with lots of little boxes all the same. Um, you know, we can have differences, just it still fits in with the street scene, but it's different. And I think in this particular case, we have something that's slightly different, um, but still keeps within the conservation area, still looks at conservation materials uh, and does a good job and is a downside better than what the previous one was. Uh, it's hidden away quite considerably, not completely, but considerably. And I don't think it's going to affect people's views or people's problems. And I think within a few years time, no one will even notice the difference. So I think we've got to be a little cautious with, with worrying about street scene. But if I, if I was here, I would say that the only thing that I would agree to would be a change in the roof, if that's what my colleague thinks is best. And in which case, let's go ahead with it, with that particular condition and materials. Uh, I want to say again, the Councillor Robson. Thank you, Chair. Um, it seems to me that the only major point of contention is the roof, um, because it's the most visible, obviously, and that is because of the fact that it is amongst others which have got red tiled roofs with pan tiles. Um, is it the colour that is the problem or is it the texture that is the problem we hone it down because you can get flush red tiles that are flush with the roof like concrete slates that are red um and that would that would solve in several colors and that would solve the 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 um and presumably the pitches we we assume that both can be used on the same pitch um but that seems to me like another possible compromise, which would, um, so we get the color, but the texture would be flat like, like slate. So it'd be easier to mount photovoltaic cells panels on. Any other councillors wishes? Uh, right, Councillor Gill, one more. Well, wow, thank you. Yes, that's okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, um, uh, the neighboring, House has got uh, rosemary tiles, which are flat red tiles. 
And um, yeah, you're quite right. You can get flat phot photovoltaic cells in black that would insert into those just like any other red roof with a, with a solar panel on it. Is, is it that, that part of it, it's not really a problem. Um, is that enough to satisfy officers if we just change those tiles to rosemary? I mean, you know, rosemary is a freely available chair, and if it's the next door house, you can't go wrong, really. Mm. But, uh, but I mean, as far as the as far as I'm concerned about the the windows and things like, I have no issue with that whatsoever. I, I think it's an accessible home. Uh, lots of extensions, even in the village now, are having even elsewhere are having glass everything's glass now you know it's glass extensions glass roofs and everything else I, I personally quite like it that's my personal view but of course we're trying to obviously take in board the comments of the parish council as well because it's their village and it's in a conservation area and uh, they're very passionate about what type of buildings are in the village so i'm obviously speaking on behalf of them as well at the same time <laughs> So, uh, and we've got to satisfy off officers' um, needs about the materials. The, the roof is, is an issue. Maybe the, the stone cladding could be different. Um, you know, it, it looks like manufactured stone, unless that's just an artist's impression, but it's not clear on what cladding is going to be on there. Uh, that, that, otherwise, uh, I have no problem with the windows. I'm happy to approve it. Right, just uh, make out the plan of one. Um, through you, Mr Chairman, <clears throat> it's not really a case of satisfying the officers. You, as members of the planning committee, are uh, the decision makers, so you need to be satisfied that you're happy with the design and scale of the dwelling as well as the materials. So if, if you're happy to approve the design but you would prefer to see a red roof, we can impose a condition that requires details of the materials to be submitted and agreed but requires the roofing material to be red. Um, that then gives them the flexibility to use a pan tile, a flat tile, a rosemary tile. If the applicant is unsatisfied with that decision, they have a right to appeal against the imposition of that condition, um, or they could apply to vary the terms of that condition at a later date. We know the applicant is not satisfied with a red tile. She wants black slate. That's what she's applied for. That's what the application has been submitted as. And um, so as the decision makers, you need to be satisfied whether you're happy to approve it with potentially a slate roof, if that's what we go with. Right, thank you very much. Uh, right, we've had a, um, a proposal from Councillor Robson, seconded by Councillor Beauville, for approval with the conditions that have just been outlined. Sorry. Can I go through conditions with you, Chairman? Yes. I think we would, we would ex if you were to grant this today, we'd expect to see the normal time limit condition my advice to you would be to impose a condition requiring the submission of materials details before development commences. We would want to see details of the landscaping of the site, including a scheme of planting. Um, we'd want to see the tree, the retained trees on the site protected, so a tree protection condition. We need details to deal with surface water and site levels. And the, the, the dwelling is quite big, um, fills quite a bit of the site. So my advice to you would be to consider whether you might need to remove permitted development rights for further extensions to make that property even bigger within its plot, and then we want a condition detailing the approved plans. Thank you. Right, councillors. Um, so again, we had a also councillor Robson, seconded by councillor Beauville, um, with the conditions that you've just heard from the planning officer for approval on this application. I just want to be clear, we are approving this with the conditions, with the conditions that, for the red roof, yes. not as it is. Yeah, that's, that was, that was, that's to clarify, Chairman, we the standard condition that we impose to do with materials requires all materials to be submitted and agreed in writing. Mm. That would give them the op the flexibility to to have the argument with us later about whether slate or, or clay is acceptable. The decision on a submission of materials application comes down to officers mm. and our clear preference is for, for, for red uh, play. Um, if you're satisfied, if you're only satisfied to grant planning permission with a red roof, you need to be explicit in the condition that the materials to be submitted relating to the roof need to be red in colour. If you are satisfied that slate is acceptable, then you can just put the standard condition on requiring details of the slate to be agreed with us on site in the same way as the bricks will be. Yes, Councillor Wilkinson. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, just to come back. Given the uh, backwards and forwards with officers and, and, and the disagreement between the applicant and the officers in terms of the, uh, of the, of the materials used, I think it's unwise for us to go down the route of saying we'll pass it back to the officers to decide on the materials because they're just going to come to a hiatus there and it's going to stop and we're wasting our time. We have got to make the decision here as to whether or not we agree that there's no detriment to the conservation area by using a traditional method of, of, of um, slate roofs or we go the opposite way saying we, we insist that it goes red even though I can just look on my photographs now that the main street does not have all red roofs. <laughs> the rest is a dark one that I just looked at. So that is what we've got to decide on. Yes, Councillor Robs. Uh, shall we approve this as is shown in the plans? Subject to the, two. Subject to the conditions, yes. Yeah, right. Okay, then. So, sorry. Still We'd still want to see samples of the bricks, etc. Yes, yeah. that's the condition that you mentioned, yeah. Yeah. No. Right. With, <laughs> with the backers and forwards of all, now that we're aware of what the conditions are now that, we're, that uh, need to be, need to be uh, complied with. So we'll, as again, <laughs> Councillor Robson proposed, Councillor Bob has seconded. We'll just now move to the vote. All those in favour? Eight. Any against? Councillor Casson, and obviously no abstentions. Thank you very much. Right, so that planning approval is passed with the conditions being outlined uh, at the on, on the materials. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All right, councillors, we will now move on to agenda item number five. There are no speakers, so we'll just bring in the planning officer, first of all. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. This is an application uh, for a variation of condition relating to a scheme for two dwellings on land to the northwest of Wald Close, which is number 76 Beverly Road, South Cave. The variation relates to condition number seven, which is uh, levels eight, which is... It says damp proof calls on it's, it's materials, I think is number eight. Uh, 13, which is windows, and 14, which is the approved plans. Effectively, it seeks to change the levels across the site, um, the materials and the uh, details for no, for the dwelling on plot two. Um, the application the rec application is recommended for approval, and there are no updates to the report as printed. Thank you. Um, I will... No, I say there are no speakers on this one, so we'll leave this open to the planning office, to the councillors. Councillor Gill first, thank you. Uh, I'm going to be quite short on this, really. Uh, read it all in detail. Um, it, it's, it's amendment, which is turning out that the roof heights are lower than they were before, even though three a third of the, uh, I think it's plot two, I might get, I got that wrong, is a third of it, yeah, plot two is actually, even though it's a two-storey, a third of it is two-storey, it's still lower than the original proposal going back. And I think it's some pedantics over... South Cape Parish Council, I think, that's brought this over. I personally haven't got a problem with it. I'd like to propose it's approved. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Gill. And any other councillor? Uh, yes, Councillor Robson. Thank you, Chair. I mean, uh, I, I agree. It's it's pretty innocuous. Um, however, um, there's a little thing that kind of rankles with me, and it's just a purely aesthetic thing. And it, you know, this this is not a deal breaker as far as I'm concerned. But I mean, I do love hipped roofs, and uh, I don't know if anyone knew that before, but I do. Um, and this has got a single hipped roof, and all the other all the other gables are, are, are flat. Um, it looks wrong to me, and I can't understand why there's just one hipped roof on, on the whole design. Um, can anyone explain that? Um, I, I can't, Mr. Chairman. It's, uh, it's the design solution proposed by the, the architects. I mean, that hipped roof face is northeast towards the neighbouring property, and plot two is the closest property to that to that neighbour. So, I it could be to do with reducing the massing of that elevation for that neighbour, or it could be a design choice by the applicant. I, I honestly don't know. I'm, I'm I'm quite comfortable with it across the wider scheme. There, there's a mix of hipped and pitch, hipped and ridged roofs on plots one and two. So. I take your point, but I don't. I don't know why they've designed it like that. Councillor uh, Hopton, sorry. Yeah, I agree with what Councillor Gills just said, and I'd propose to second what Councillor Gills said. And I'd, if everyone's agreeable, just like to move to the vote. Councillors um, happy with moving straight to the vote now. Right, so what a proposal, proposal for approval from Councillor Gills, seconded by Councillor Hopton. All those in favour, put your hands up, please. Well, that was a unanimous vote. Thank you very much indeed. So that planning approved, that planning application has been approved, subject to the conditions that were with the planning officer. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. First one is 6A. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, 6A was included in error, I'm afraid. Uh, we'd sent over a, de a decision relating to the Beverly area, which I believe has been or will be reported to the Eastern Area uh, Subcommittee. So if you, if it's okay with members, I'll skip over that one, given that it's not relevant to, uh, to our patch. Uh, but 6B, you will be familiar with. This is Willow Waters on Burnby Lane in Pocklington. It came before the committee uh, last year, it was a scheme to replace two chalets with two permanent dwellings outside the development limit, but close to other housing in Pocklington. And I'm pleased to say that the uh, the appeal was dismissed for both reasons detailed in the uh, in the officer's recommendation and and and, and uh, agreed with by members. That was the the, the scheme. It be the site's an inappropriate location for housing development. It was outside the development limit. Conflicts with our spatial strategy and uh, uh, position towards where housing should be acceptable. And subsequently, because it's not an appropriate location for permanent housing, harmful to area character and uh, character of the countryside, will conflict with the design and area character policies of the MPPF and the local plan, um, nothing to outweigh that harm. Uh, so the appeal was dismissed. So a good decision um, from the subcommittee on that one. Thank you, Chairman. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Um, well, that concludes the meeting for today. And thank you very much.